Here's your wrestling news for August 4th, 2021. And your headlines for today include WWE's reason for piping in crowd reactions during Raw. Ronda Rousey drags WWE fans for not supporting Bray Wyatt. Ric Flair texted Vince McMahon to complain about Charlotte's booking. Flair received an unexpected invitation post WWE release. Released WWE NXT superstars set for AEW debut at Homecoming. WWE locker room reaction post recent WWE releases. Legendary wrestler assassin Jody Hamilton passes away at 82. Chris Jericho's strong reaction to Vince McMahon's AEW comments. Nia Jax received stitches after suffering bad cut during WWE Raw. Ex WWE wrestler cleared for in ring return after announcing retirement from pro wrestling, and more. We are kicking off today with Raw, which saw a massive botch take place this week during Drew McIntyre's entrance. As the commentator spoke during Drew's entrance, Michael Cole's voice could be heard saying, 16-time world champion, presumably a reference to John Cena. This quickly led fans to accuse WWE of using piped-in crowd noise, in this case from a Cena entrance, but apparently that isn't the case. On his YouTube show, Fightful's Sean Ross Sapp explained why Cole's voice was heard, saying, I was told by someone in WWE that it was some kind of production error, so it wasn't necessarily them trying to lay audio over it, at least that's the line I was given. It was like a commercial or something like that. Between the CM Punk chants and calls of We Want Wyatt, WWE had plenty of reason to try and cover up crowd noise this week, but opted not to during the live broadcast. We'll have to see if those chants make any replays of Monday's Raw, but this botch during McIntyre's entrance wasn't WWE trying to sweeten the audio. Fans didn't see Bray Wyatt on this week's Raw and made their voices heard about his release several times during the show. The crowd weren't happy one bit about Bray's shocking release last week, but this outrage is too little too late, according to Ronda Rousey. On Twitter, the former Raw Women's Champion made herself heard too, criticizing fans who chanted for Wyatt during last night's Raw, saying they're the same people who chanted for beach balls when he was performing. Rousey added that if WWE treated him like he was expendable, it was only because of, quote, ungrateful idiots who are now shocked to see him go. The beach balls Rousey reference became such a problem at WWE shows that the company banned them from live events in 2017. This was quite a loaded tweet from Rousey, but it's worth noting that this is purely subject and her opinion, and there's plenty of examples of fans honestly cheering for Bray, even in defeat. There's still no word on when Rousey will return to WWE as she's currently pregnant with her first child, but after calling fans ungrateful idiots, it's unlikely she'll be back as a face if she returns at all. Now, earlier this week, WWE parted ways with Ric Flair after the Nature Boy requested to be released from his contract. We previously reported that Flair had spoken out against WWE's booking of him, and it wasn't just his own character he was concerned about. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer clarified that Flair messaged Vince McMahon about Charlotte, saying the company had put her in a situation he didn't like. It's unclear what that situation is, but it could be anything from WWE's reluctance to use her fiancé Andrade before his release, to the awkward angle with Lacey Evans that only ended when the sassy Southern Belle became pregnant. Whatever the reason, Rick is no longer a contracted WWE performer, and time will tell where he goes next. It was only last year that the Nature Boy inked a new deal with WWE, making his departure this week all the more shocking. According to a report from TMZ, however, Flair's departure wasn't a sudden thing, as the plans for him to leave had been in the works for a while, and both sides only recently came to an agreement. Now, WWE themselves have confirmed Flair's departure on their website with some very interesting terminology. In their statement, WWE confirmed that Flair has been released, but chose not to wish the two-time Hall of Famer the best in his future endeavors. WWE almost always wishes superstars the best in the future, and it's telling that they opted not to do the same for the Nature Boy. As one of the biggest names in wrestling ever, we are confident that Flair will do well wherever he goes next, even if WWE don't want him to achieve his best after leaving the company. Flair has already received an offer to join AEW's Dark Order, and now he's received an invitation from the National Wrestling Alliance. 
On Twitter, the NWA invited Flair, a 10-time NWA World Heavyweight Champion, to their next pay-per-view, their 73rd anniversary show that takes place on August 29th. Flair's name is synonymous with the NWA as he was inducted into their Hall of Fame in 2008, and we'll have to see if he shows up to St. Louis later this month. Flair is hardly the only person to leave WWE recently, as the company cut several NXT superstars on June 25th, including the popular tag team Everrise. It hasn't taken them long to end up on another pro wrestling show, as the team will be at AEW's homecoming event tonight. As confirmed on social media, Matt Martell and Chase Parker will team with Daniel Garcia to face Jon Moxley, Darby Allin, and Eddie Kingston in a huge six-man tag on the show. The official announcement said that 2.0 has arrived in AEW, but it hasn't been specified if they're officially All Elite just yet. Tonight's show will also see Malachi Black's AEW in-ring debut when he faces Cody Rhodes, and Chris Jericho faces his old WCW nemesis Juventud Guerrera, meaning there'll be plenty for fans to tune in for at AEW's homecoming. For the past year, WWE have cut dozens of superstars all in the name of budget cuts, despite the company boasting record profits. Speaking on Ryan Satin's Out of Character podcast, United States champion Sheamus discussed the locker room morale after so many releases, and despite reports that superstars fear their jobs aren't secure anymore, Sheamus explained, No one ever wants to see releases, you know, I lost a lot of friends who are no longer with the company. But the truth of the matter is, locker room morale is good. The lads have a crake, they joke, they rib each other, you know what I mean? We're always slagging each other off, and it's a really, really good vibe. Despite all these releases, the WWE locker room remains united and are keeping positive, but with more releases expected, we'll have to see how long these good spirits can last. We've got some sad news to report as Jody Hamilton, better known in wrestling as The Assassin, has died aged 82. Retired WWE referee Nick Patrick, who is actually Jody Jr., confirmed the news of his father's death, and no cause of death is known at this time. Patrick said his father died around 2.16 a.m. on Tuesday and went peacefully, surrounded by those who loved him. As one half of the Assassin's tag team in the 60s, Hamilton frequently appeared on Georgia Championship Wrestling before retiring in the 1980s due to a back injury and we'd like to send our condolences to the entire Hamilton family at this sad time. Now, Last month, Vince McMahon hosted WWE's 2021 Second Quarter Investors Call, and he had plenty to say about both his own company and AEW. When asked about AEW and the investment the company is making in its own roster, Vince said he didn't see the All Elite promotion as competition, adding that AEW isn't on the same level as WCW was during the Monday Night Wars. The boss even joked that if AEW wants to invest in its own roster, then perhaps WWE could give them some more talent, referring to the many former superstars who now call AEW home. One person who knows all about jumping to AEW is Chris Jericho, who, in an interview with Kenny McIntosh of Inside the Ropes, said Vince was smart to say what he said. Well, what else is he going to say, you know? And to respond to that, we don't see WWE as competition, and he was smart to say that. Jericho claimed that AEW isn't worried about WWE and never has been, a strange claim given how frequently the All Elite promotion references WWE, and also discussed the Wednesday Night Wars which ended earlier this year. We're not worried about what WWE is, and we haven't been since day one. We weren't worried about what NXT did, the whole time with the NXT vs AEW war, which ended in a total abysmal failure for NXT, we never once had a TV screen watching what they were doing when they were doing it. We didn't know what segments they were in. We didn't know any of that. Now, the WWE way is you're watching what the competition is doing when they're on. We didn't do that. And it was no disrespect. We just didn't care. We were too busy worrying about our own company and about our own stories and about our own show to care what anybody else is doing. And that's one of the reasons why we did so well is that we were concentrating on AEW, not anything else. Discussing the Wednesday Night War, Jericho said that his company couldn't help that WWE NXT was put up against them and compared it to if the Beatles were doing a reunion show the same night as Dynamite. Instead of focusing on the competition, it was said how AEW has worked very hard to focus on themselves and are constantly improving, which has been proven in their ratings and demographics. 
When asked if AEW sees WWE as a problem to them, Jericho said, WWE is not competition for us. We're competition for ourselves. So for Vince to say that, to me, it's probably reverse psychology and that he does see us as competition. But deep down inside, what does it really matter? Jericho then looked ahead to the future, saying that although WWE has billion dollar TV deals right now, that's something AEW is working towards and will eventually get there thanks to their demographics beating WWE. When that happens, then we'll see true competition between WWE and AEW, adding that a rivalry for bragging rights doesn't mean anything and concluded by saying that ultimately it's the money that you make from those bragging rights that count. AEW is still a young company, but they've already made some huge waves in the wrestling industry, and WWE is practically unkillable at this point thanks to the fixed billion dollar contracts. AEW has proven to be a popular alternative for countless fans. Over to Raw as Nia Jax faced Rhea Ripley on this week's show and was busted open badly by the Australian superstar. Despite losing a significant amount of blood, Jax continued the match and even worked the post-match segment with Shayna Baszler. In a video on Twitter, Jax can be seen getting stitches in her face as she seemed to take the injury like a champ. On Instagram, the irresistible force took aim at Ripley, saying, Nobody makes me bleed my own blood, which is a line from Ben Stiller's character in Dodgeball. It appears that Jax will be looking for payback on Ripley despite the obvious plan for Baszler and Jax to have their own feud soon, and we'll have to see what the former Raw Women's Champion does next after this week's gruesome injury. And we're ending today with Leo Rush, who made his AEW debut at the Double or Nothing pay-per-view, but his time with the company was short-lived. In the Casino Battle Royal, Rush suffered an ACL injury, and after saying he was content with his accomplishments in wrestling, announced his retirement from the ring. Now though, the former WWE superstar is looking to return, as he's tweeted that he's been working hard in physical rehab for three months and is now cleared to wrestle again. Before his retirement, Rush had contractual agreements with New Japan and has previously stated he intends to fulfill those commitments when healthy, so don't be too surprised if he appeared at New Japan's resurgence event on August 14th. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.